Hi everybody, my name is London Breed. I'm president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, running for mayor here in San Francisco. In fact, I actually grew up here, born and raised. My mom actually was born and raised here as well. Um, we actually grew up, I grew up in the Western Edition in public housing. And I went to public schools here in San Francisco and was really fortunate because in my community, the challenges that exist, the violence, the hopelessness, the drugs, the frustration, the despair, that was what my normal was. And so a lot of my life has been dedicated to working in the community. After I finished at UC Davis, I came back. I was working in the neighborhood, working with young people. In fact, I served as the executive director of the African American Art and Culture Complex for 10 years, where I worked during a time where we were dealing with a lot of violence, a lot of challenges in the community before I ran for the Board of Supervisors. I actually got my uh, graduate degree from USF, and I served on the Fire Commission and the Redevelopment Agency Commission um, during the time when I was working for the Treasurer of the Development Authority. Uh, before becoming a member of the Board of Supervisors, like I said, my work and my life has been dedicated to working in the community, and I'm proud of being able to help address many of the challenges that exist. But I ran for the Board of Supervisors in 2012 because I felt that we needed a voice. We needed to make sure that we were connecting the dots between what was happening in neighborhoods all over San Francisco, the policies that we create, as well as how San Francisco spends money and how it impacts the rest of the community. So I've been on the Board of Supervisors for five years now, and not everything about being on the board is about policy. In fact, one of the first things that I was able to do is get Mayor Ed Lee to give $2 million to the San Francisco Housing Authority. We really habilitated 179 empty public housing units, units that had been empty for years, and we placed 179 formerly homeless families in those units. I helped to pass neighborhood preference legislation because in the Western Edition, where so many people have been priced out or pushed out, we would build housing and it would be difficult for people living in our community to access the new developments being built there. I led the effort to pass neighborhood preference legislation so that 40% of all new units go to the people who actually live in our community. So why am I running for mayor? I have a bold and creative vision to help us address many of the challenges that exist in our city and have existed for far too long. Issues around homelessness, housing, and public safety, transportation. How do we as a city move the city forward without making sure that all of those things work hand in hand? On homelessness, during the very brief time that I served as acting mayor, I was so honored to cut the ribbon on the Auburn Hotel 70 new housing units for 70 formerly homeless veterans. I know that Mayor Ed Lee made a commitment to end veteran homelessness, and he had been well on his way to doing that. As mayor, that is one of my commitments. How do we address issues around homelessness? We know people who are living on our streets, sadly, suffer from mental illness, sadly, suffer from addiction. Just because we don't want to see those things doesn't mean that it's just going to go away. I want to reform our mental health system. I don't want our jails to continue to be used as a place for people who are mentally ill. Folks are locked up. 72 hours later, they're right back in the same place with no help and no assistance. We need to stop treating it like a criminal issue and treat it like the public health crisis that it is. I've already proposed legislation. I've already worked to open 54 new mental health stabilization beds. And as mayor, I plan to hold all hospitals accountable to have facilities for us to work with people struggling with mental illness. Also, I'm proposing something very controversial, safe injection sites. Now, I'm proposing it not to make it convenient for people who are struggling with addiction to use drugs. You see the needles on our streets. You see people who are shooting up openly, and those are also people who need help. I sadly lost a sister to a drug overdose in the city, and every time she would call me asking for help, I would go down to the Tenderloin looking for her, and she's nowhere to be found. What safe injection sites could provide is not just a place for people who have challenges with addiction to just shoot up. It's a place to provide treatment on demand. It's a place to provide somewhere for someone to go if they need help. Combining services and support with these safe injection sites is something that I think can help us address this issue 
and also can hopefully help us get people the treatment that they need. It's working in places like Vancouver, Canada, a place where I had an opportunity to visit and see how, how much cleaner the streets are, but more importantly, over 3,400 people refer to detox who have not gone back through the system. This is about solutions, and part of our solutions has to be to build more housing and build more housing faster. And again, I grew up in this community, and a lot of my friends who grew up here can't afford to live in San Francisco anymore. We have to think about what we as a city plan to do for the next generation and for San Franciscans now in terms of access to housing. So I helped to identify underutilized sites in my community. In fact, the McDonald's site on Hayden Stanyan, underutilized parking lot. I approached McDonald's, asked them if they would be willing to work with the city. They sold us the land for below market rate, and we're going to build 100% affordable housing for low, moderate, and middle income residents in the Haight Ashbury community. And so those are the kinds of things that we need to do. Building more housing, getting creative, being proactive, seeking out properties, and no, the city can't afford to buy every single property that's available for housing development, but what we can do is develop public-private partnerships for the purposes of building more housing. And we can build more modular housing. Modular housing can be built faster and less expensive. When we think about people who need homes, we have to move faster and get rid of the bureaucratic layers that get in the way of housing development in San Francisco. And if I can't get that through the Board of Supervisors, I want to make sure that I go to the voters because I want to cut the process in half so that we can get housing production moving in San Francisco. It's also important to make sure that we have people feel safe in our communities. I want to make sure that we add more police officers and they're walking the beats in our neighborhoods and they know our communities. It took years to develop relationships between the young folks that I work with and the police department because at the time, as I said, we were dealing with some of the worst violence in the history of our city. We were losing kids at a regular pace, and I wanted to make sure that our community felt protected. So bringing the police in and working with them in our community, it takes time, but we got made a lot of progress in that effort, and we're gonna continue to make sure that we get more officers on our streets so that people feel safe. We also have to make sure that our public transportation system is such that it is working for people, that they use it as a priority. In fact, when I came on the board of supervisors, I'm the one who actually pushed the MTA and sponsored the legislation for the new bus purchase and the new train purchases, as well as pushing to hire more drivers. Here in San Francisco, we actually banned the box to give people a real shot at a second chance. And some of the folks I grew up with are actually now driving for Muni. People that didn't have an opportunity to work for the city now have an opportunity to work for the city and get a second chance. These are the kinds of policies that I've worked on and pushing the envelope, I plan to do just that as the mayor of this city. The other thing that I'm pushing for is an education. My time's up? The other thing I'm pushing for is making sure that we make a real connection between everything that's happening in this city and the next generation of young people. You know, I went to public schools, and if it weren't for my teachers and my counselors and the mayor's youth employment and training program, I don't know where I would be. As I said, I did lose a sister to a drug overdose. I do have a, a brother who is still incarcerated, and I think, what is the difference? It's opportunity, and I want to make sure this doesn't continue to happen to people in our city, especially communities who constantly are left behind. And so I'm proposing in my education platform that these companies provide paid internship opportunities for our high school students so that they can hopefully get credit for school, so that they can hopefully get paid, but more importantly, so that they can be exposed at an early age to all that San Francisco has to offer. I didn't know a lot of the stuff that existed in San Francisco existed when I was in high school. And I want to make sure that that doesn't happen to the next generation of young people growing up. And so I want to make sure that the tech company, the healthcare industry, the city and county of San Francisco, that there is a real opportunity to connect those young people to all the stuff that's going on in our city. It will take a lot of work. San Francisco is an amazing city. It's one that I'm proud to be a part of, one that I'm proud to 
have grown up in and been able to serve in various capacities throughout my career. I want to live here for the rest of my life, and there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to need to fix in order to make sure that not only do folks who are continuously getting left behind still have an opportunity to be here, but what do we look like in the future, and how do we make sure that the cycle doesn't continue to repeat itself? It's going to take guts, it's going to take fearlessness, it's going to take someone who is willing to roll up their sleeves and do the work necessary to get us to a better place. I'd be honored to have your support, and I thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, my first question on homelessness. Over 40% of the post-9-11 veterans, that is the younger veterans in our community, and 20% of the pre-9-11 veterans, that's mostly from the Vietnam era, have reported being homeless in the past year. On one hand, San Francisco Department of Homelessness and Supported Housing has reported significant difficulties in getting landlords to take HUD bash vouchers. On the other hand, many veterans that have unstable living arrangements that do not meet the, heart, the Department of Housing and Urban Development definition of homelessness and single room occupancy SRO housing is not appropriate for our older veterans who need wraparound services. As mayor, what do you intend to do to make sure all veterans are appropriately housed? Um, thank you for your question, and as I said, um, a couple of years ago, Mayor Ed Lee made a commitment that we are going to end veteran homelessness here in the city and county of San Francisco, and I do think that we are well on our way. Identifying locations like the Auburn Hotel, which was completely renovated, which provides a safe, affordable place for 100% veteran housing is something that we need to think about, and most of those veterans are actually seniors. And I do think that what we have to do is a better job of working directly with our veteran community to identify each person's individual need. Because we know there is no one size that fits all. You may have someone who is a senior. You may have someone who does need wraparound services. And making sure we make the connection to the opportunity and the person. But at the end of the day, we have to build more housing. We have to get rid of the bureaucratic red tape that gets in the way. And part of what I am looking forward to doing as well is identifying um, a working with this program called Move On. Because some of you might know about you know, our programs where we get formerly homeless people and veterans in particular housed maybe in a single room occupancy place, not the best location for them. And part of what I want to do is work with homeowners who have in-laws, who have other properties where they would be willing to enter into a contract with this particular agency. And it also comes with a social worker, someone who is looking out for that person, someone who is making sure the rent gets paid. Making the connection in that way is something that we could do to assist in this challenge, not just with our veteran population, but also with some of our folks who are living in our SROs and some of our homeless population. So I really want to make sure that there, again, is a real connection to um, opportunity and what exists in San Francisco. And also, the city should work harder on trying to make the connections so that people, and, and also potentially provide the subsidies, you know, if the Section 8 uh, VASH program is not sufficient to cover the rent expenses, because those are things that we should be deal doing and could be very helpful in this regard. Second question on mental health. Uh, one third of veterans have considered suicide or have made plans to end their life in suicide. Uh, more than half of the veterans of all ages uh, are screening positive for PTSD or depression. Um, and post 9 11 veterans are twice as likely as pre 9 11 veterans to engage in high risk taking behaviors like driving after drinking alcohol, carrying a weapon, or looking to start a fight. Nearly 60% of post 9 11 veterans have probable alcohol drinking. 50% of veterans have reported a significant physical or mental health issue for which they are not receiving care. These numbers tell me that we are facing an unprecedented crisis in mental health issues and a wave of second tier effects that affect families, coworkers, and friends of their veterans in our community. As mayor, what will you do to improve mental health services in San Francisco? And thank you for that question. And for me, again, it goes back to my education platform making sure that there are mental health professionals in our schools. I also want to make sure that we reform our mental health system, and I've already began the process of doing just that. For example, we talk about conservatorship because there are people who are suffering in that particular way. My, 
my legislation changes the role of conservatorship so that we remove it from the district attorney's office to the city attorney's office where they handle child conservatorship cases and also making sure that our departments like aging and adult services, the Department of Public Health, those folks who develop the case are developing the right case for the purposes of getting people help, getting them conserved if necessary, and the other side of that is our mental health stabilization beds, which again, we opened 54 at St. Mary's. We need to make sure that all of our hospitals have supportive services and have mental health stabilization beds. And it, this is not a problem that is just gonna disappear because we don't wanna see it. And I don't think the hospital community is working closely enough with the city to try and provide assistance and services in this regard. It's one that I care about making sure that we do. So I am willing to work with the hospital community, work with our public schools, and reform how we provide support and assistance for mental health. Thank you so much. Uh, the third question is on employment. Veterans face a disproportionately high rate of unemployment and underemployment in the city of San Francisco. 80% of service members leave the military without a job, and almost 60% of post-9-11 veterans in San Francisco reported that their military skills and experiences are dismissed by employers. As a result, 83% of post-9-11 veterans who work full-time have an annual salary that is below $60,000 uh, a year, and 40% of veterans report uh, they earn below $36,000 a year. That is simply not enough to survive, much less live with a dignified life. As mayor, what will you do to make sure veterans find appropriate employment resources? Thank you, and I would um, do something similar to what I've been doing in the Western Edition. We have a place called the Success Center. And the Success Center is, we have regular um, job fairs, we have people who are professionals who help people with their resumes, who help people look for employment opportunities, who help people develop uh, interview skills, and more importantly, you know, folks who want to take it to the next level and look for another opportunity where they can make more money. This Success Center has been incredible. They've held tech job fairs, they've held um, construction job fairs, retail job fairs, bringing people into the community and working uh, with individuals to try and find the right fit for the uh, person is something that we've been doing already in the Western Edition. It's something that I want to make sure that we're doing in collaboration with our Veterans Commission for the purposes of connecting people to opportunities. Uh, and the last question is on community. Nearly 75% of all veterans in San Francisco have reported difficulties adjusting to civilian life. 33% reported that they do not know where to go or who to contact if they don't. Nearly two-thirds of post-9-11 veterans indicate that civilians do not appreciate the sacrifices they've made, with more than 80% indicating that civilians don't understand their problems. As mayor, what will you do to help reintegrate veterans into our community? Yeah, this is um, definitely one that kind of hits home because, as I said, my grandmother, she raised me, my grandfather, he actually served in the Army, and the stories of what I heard and just what happened when he came home and the challenges um, that exist um, existed in their lives was really frustrating. The difficulty in finding employment and finding housing um, was one that was challenging even back then. And so I do think um, that we want to, as a city, because I know that there are services but the problem is not everyone is familiar with what's available and not everyone is connected to what's available. And so I am committed to working with our Veterans uh, Commission and making sure that we're doing a lot more outreach to provide support, to provide services to the veterans community of things that I know already exist, but we also have to expand those programs. We have to expand mental health services because so many people are suffering in that regard. I see it on the streets every day. I'm sure you see it on the streets every day. It's one of the things that I'm most focused on to try and address the challenges that exist with our homeless population specifically. So I do think that we have to make sure that we don't keep the veterans community separated from the rest of the city and county of San Francisco.
Francisco. It has to be integrated. There has to be a way that we work together. And I am committed as mayor to make sure that we do just that, that we make the connections and work together um, to address what your specific concerns are and to increase capacity if there's a need to do so as well.